welcome once again to the Waters and Stanton video channel. Thank you for joining me. My ham radio call sign is Golf 3 Oscar Juliet Victor. My name is Peter Waters. And I get quite a few inquiries over the, well, over the past year, I've had quite a few inquiries about antennas for small gardens. And it is a, a particular problem, isn't it? You've got a small garden and uh, you've got to want, well, you want to erect an antenna. We're talking about HF operation. Of course, what is a small garden? Well, a small garden can be anything from virtually nothing to about 100 foot long or so, even more. It depends on where you are and how you compare your gardens with other people's gardens. And of course, it also depends on whether the garden is long enough for the antenna you would like. I remember when I was first licensed, we were all on 160 metres. We yearned for a garden that was at least 132 foot long, because that was a that was a quarter wave on 160 metres, and a quarter wave was not a bad aerial to get up on 160 metres. But um, these days, uh, gardens have shrunk, uh, and uh, well, I think you're fortunate if you've got a garden that's around about 50 foot long. Some are even less than that. Anyway. What I want to do is really look back over the last year at the antennas that seem to be used by stations based on what I hear on the air and also what uh, you tell me um, when you send me uh, messages and so forth. And uh, the, uh, the classic favourite has been the G5RV over the years. G5RV I mean, is probably the most famous antenna ever and I'm going to do a video on that shortly because there's one or two things that are interesting about the G5RV which perhaps haven't been mentioned and uh, it's worth taking a closer look but the G5RV is still quite popular but I think the NFED half wave has actually beaten the G5RV over the last 12 months in 2022. A uh, lot of people are using it now and I think the reason they use it is because it is first of all it's very easy to erect and secondly it's a pretty sure far antenna. That's, that's an interesting thing to say because I still get occasionally um, messages from uh, guys that say, well, I wouldn't use an NFED wire. They, they don't work, they're lossy, they're very noisy. Well, that probably is the image that it has earned over the years, but it seems to have changed now. And all those that have tried an NFED halfway for the first time are pleasantly surprised. And they're pleasantly surprised, not only because it works well, but because it fits in their garden. And also, it's not overly expensive. And the idea of a length of wire down the garden is very attractive, even if you've got a small garden, because it's basically invisible. I mean, a lot of, a lot of areas now have got bands on aerials, but I think a wire down the garden, a thin wire down the garden, perhaps fastened to a tree, if you've got a tree at the bottom of the garden, is not very obvious, and you can probably get away with it. If you erect a mast, then maybe you might attract a bit of attention. Best thing to do is put a flag on the top of it. But uh, um, the NFED half wave is very attractive because, as I say, it works. You can build your own transformer for, well, for about £10. You can build your own transformer, 49 to 1 classic transformer, and uh, a length of wire, whatever it costs you. So uh, it's, it's good. And being in fed uh, half wave, it has the um, ability to also work on its harmonics. Now, if you can get a 60 foot, oh, sorry, I'm talking about Imperial now, but that's the way I was brought up. If you've got a 66 foot wire, or what is it, um, uh, 20 meters of wire uh, running down the garden, your garden's not long enough, you can just uh, drop the end down vertically. So you could probably get it into a 50 foot, 50 foot. so here we go again. Uh, sorry, I'll, I'll talk in, <laughs> I'm talking various measurements depending on uh, uh, whether I flop back to my uh, uh, early days or whether I sort of come up to date. But if you've got a 20 metre length of wire, um, you can probably um, uh, accommodate it in a much smaller garden by ju just dropping down the end. Or in fact, you can actually drop both ends down. And in fact, I'm currently wor working something called a half square. It's a 20 metre half square. It only takes up 10 metres of garden length and it has or it's claimed to have a 3 dB gain on 20 metres. Now, I'll try and remember to put uh, a link to this antenna um, at the bottom of this video because it covers uh, 40, 20, 15 and 10 metres, gives you 3 dB of gain on the 20 metre band and only needs a length of garden uh, 10 metres long. So it's very attractive. And it's uh, erected at a height of around about, uh, what are we about, there's about uh, five, yeah, about five metres. 
it's erected at the height of about five meters, so it's not terribly high. And you can get away with a fastening one end to a, to a tree and the other end to the house or whatever. But uh, I'll put a link anyway and you give you, give you a clear view. So the Enfit Halfwave certainly is probably the most popular antenna that I've come across in uh, 2022. Dipoles. Well, dipoles um, come in various shapes and sizes. The doublet is having a bit of a comeback, actually. And, uh, of course, the, the G5RV, in many respects, is a doublet. But the, the doublet is having a comeback. The reason it's having a comeback is because it is another example of a multiband antenna. Um, the, the top section doesn't have to be any particular length. And it has the ability to work on bands lower than you expect. So if, for example, you put up a 20-metre uh, doublet, you could probably persuade, well you're certainly persuaded to work on 60 meters and you might even be able to persuade it to work on 80 meters. Uh, it's very flexible and of course it will work on all the higher bands with ease. You do need an antenna matter of some sort. Now sometimes you can get away um, with the internal matter in your uh, uh, transceiver Sometimes you'll need an external one, but either way, you will need some form of ballon because a, a, a doublet um, is fed with balanced line. The popular one is 450 ohm ladder line because 450 ohm ladder line has got an extremely low loss. It's about 0.15 or 0.16 of a dB on a hundred foot at, at uh, 20 meters, I think. So it's it's negligible, but you do need to um, terminate it with a ballon. Uh, and then take a short length of coax into your transceiver or into your antenna matching unit. Uh, but it works, it works extremely well and it's, uh, it's, it's a very attractive antenna. Now, um, there's a very interesting article about ladder line. If you want to read up a bit about ladder line and losses on ladder line, then again, I'm going to put a link below this video, the, the link to a, a, uh, an article that... Um, I can't remember his name now, um, G4NSJ wrote, uh, and it's an interesting article about balanced line. And the other interesting thing is it's a bit of a byline at the end of the article, but he says that he's not convinced that ladder line is as sensitive to metal objects as one would expect. Now, the classic recommendation is ladder line is fine, but or balanced line is fine, but keep it away from metal objects. Well, that's probably still, still a sensible thing, but perhaps it doesn't have to be moved so far away from metal objects. And I can, I can sort of, um, sort of uh, you know, identify with that because I've been using balanced line over the years and I thought, well, I'm not convinced that it has to be so far away from a metal object, even if it's only about, I don't know, uh, half a metre or even less than that um, away from a metal object. And I'm not convinced that it has that much effect. And I, I'll, I'll give you a reason for that. I've messed about in the past with short whip antennas for portable operation. And it's quite interesting, if you put your hand near the voltage end of a short whip, a loaded whip, so it's a 20 meter loaded whip and it's about, I don't know, uh, a meter high, something like that. If you put your hand near the top, you'll hear it's detune, but your hand has got to be fairly close. Now, if I notice that I've got to be as much as 10 uh, centimeters uh, near the antenna to even detect any difference in the signal, in other words, it's been detuned, it does suggest that ladder line likewise can be as close as about 10 centimetres to a metal conducting object. So um, if you're worried about balanced line and metal objects, perhaps you don't have to worry so much. And as we all do in ham radio, give it a try and see how you get on. So what about the vertical antenna? Well, the vertical antenna plays a very important part on the HF bands. The vertical antenna is particularly attractive for two reasons. First of all, it fits very nicely into a small garden. And secondly, it has a low angle of radiation. It's great for DX. Now, the fact that it fits into a small garden is very attractive. A vertical does need radials, but I think over the last few years it's been generally appreciated that the advice of having quarter wave radials on the ground is really not the sort of the only way to operate a vertical. And in fact, if you have some quarter wave wires, say you have four quarter wave wires on the ground for your vertical on whatever band, um, 
you can actually double or treble the number of wires and shorten them by at least 50%, probably by about 75%, and still get very good performance. So the key factor with a vertical antenna mounted on the ground is uh, the more radials, the better. The length of the radials is not nearly so important as the number. The other thing that um, has become very apparent is the fact that a vertical on the ground is not the best place for it, particularly if you're talking about the higher bands like 20, 15 and 10 or 17 and 12 metres. It's far better if you can get that antenna off the ground, even only a metre or two metres off the ground and use tuned radials, you'll get a significant improvement, something like about 3, 3 dB gain at least. But obviously it's not so convenient. Uh, the fact that you've got radials running about and they're tuned radials for each band and you've got to have a lot of radials. We, basically, you need two radials per band. But if you've got a favourite band, say 20 metres or 15 metres or whatever band it is, um, if, you if you have that antenna raised off the ground by a couple of metres and use at least two radials that are resonant on the band of operation, you'll find a significant improvement. Now, if we go to the lower frequencies, then really and truly the best place for the antenna, the vertical antenna is on the ground. It's the only practical way of doing it and raising it off the ground is a bit of a problem. And the vertical antenna works extremely well. But there is one big problem. And that is because a lot of vertical antennas are sitting on the ground, they are affected by their surroundings. And the surroundings comprise buildings, trees, shrubs, wires, houses have got lots of wiring. So imagine that, imagine your house next door stripped of all the structure, but all the wiring still there. You've got a mass of wires which will distort the radiation pattern. And also the earth is important, not the earth, only the earth immediately below the antenna, but the earth extending quite a few wavelengths away from the antenna. So in a built up area, your vertical antenna is not going to work nearly as well as the uh, textbooks will tell you and uh, my favorite topic antenna modeling will tell you antenna modeling is great it's a great um, thing to play about with it gives you some very interesting answers and it's very educational but it doesn't always operate in the real world yes you can change the earth conductivity um, when you're modeling but what you can't do is you can't create in a 3D fashion all the objects around your antenna. So the sort of low angle of radiation, unfortunately, doesn't always, well, it does, it does exist, but it exists uh, in, in, a, in a far lower level than you would you'd expect or hope for. If you're fortunate enough to have a big field um, and you can plonk your antenna in the middle of this field, then yes, you will get the good results and you will get very similar um, performance to modeling. But the vertical antenna is one of those antennas which is not terribly easy to model in the, in the real world. And it's not performing quite as well as you would hope for, but, and it's a big but, it may well be the answer to your particular location because that's all you can get. And you know, with antennas, one of the most important things to appreciate in ham radio is you have to make the best of a bad job in terms of your location. You can't change your location, or well, most of us can't anyway. So you're stuck with where you are. If a vertical is the only antenna that you can get up, then go ahead and use a vertical. If you can't raise it up, up off the ground, fine operate it on the ground. But you do have to appreciate that there are, you know, there, 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 are, there are problems when you're operating the vertical in a, a, a very compact, confined space. But it does work, but it doesn't work nearly as well as what it would do in the middle of a field. But that really, you know, is, is the, it really is the advice um, that I would give to all, uh, well, certainly newcomers, that HF antennas, they all work. They all work to a degree. Some will work better than others, not so much because of the design, but because of the location. If, for example, you've got a dipole that is a quarter wave above the ground, it won't. It'll work okay. If you can get it a half wave above the ground, it'll work a lot better. But 
If you're talking about a half wave on 20 meters, which is what, 10 meters, that's probably okay for some people, or even 10 meters above the ground. It's not possible for a lot of people, particularly in small gardens. So you put it five meters above the ground, it'll still work, you'll still, you'll still get contacts. And of course it becomes impossible to put it at a half wave above the ground on the lower bands unless you've got a big structure. So the antennas in 2022, verticals are very popular. The end-fed half-wave, if we're talking about horizontal antennas, I think probably is the most an popular antenna I've come across. The G5RV still exists and is still used by a lot of stations, but it's not the sort of go-to antenna now. For um, a modest garden, horizontal wire that's not going to take up much room, doesn't need much in the way of support, guaranteed to work and works on, on, on more than one band, is the end-fed half-wave. So that's my... Uh, that's my, my view on the antenna situation as I saw in 2022. What is likely to change is the bank conditions. Now, the bank conditions are promised to be better in 2023 than they were in 2022, and probably better in 2024. But it's only a prediction. And I've been listening over the last few days, and uh, it's difficult to believe that we're going up, up a sunspot cycle. We certainly are, but when you go up a sunspot cycle, you also have to be aware of the dips and troughs in the, in the conditions. It's part of ham radio, it's part of the excitement and fun of uh, shortwave. I, I always compare shortwave operating with fishing. You know, you can, you can go on one day and you get a lot of fish. Not that I'm a fisherman at all, but you go on one day and you get a lot of fish, and the other day you get nothing at all. And it's just the way things are but it's all part of the fun. And part of the fun with ham radio is you very often come across the unexpected. You make a contact, you thought, gosh, I can't believe I worked that station. And if you want that sort of experience, monitor 10 and 12 meters, so some very good conditions that suddenly pop up, even for short times, even for an hour or so. Um, it's worth checking the bands and, uh, and, and checking, checking how things are because, you know, Conditions can change rapidly. Anyway, I would like to uh, encourage you to get on the air and to get on the air regularly. And if the band is flat and you don't get any answers to CQs, well, okay, the band's flat, fine. Leave it till tomorrow. You can't, you can't force the band into action. Um, FT8 is one of, these, uh, one of these modes that seems to force the band into action, but that's because of the popularity of it. Um, I mean, it's also very good for low-level signals, and if you've got a small aerial or, uh, you know, you've got a small garden, FT8 may well be the way to go. But anyway, it's, uh, we won't go down that road because everybody's got their own preferences. Some like SSB, I like CW, and some people think, well, Peter, why would you want to go on CW? Don't you want to talk to people? Well, I do talk to people. I use CW. There we are. Anyway, thanks for your support on this channel. Much appreciated. Keep enjoying your ham radio. Thanks for your support um, for us down at Portsmouth. We're glad that uh, we can be helpful to so many people and um, we're always happy to do a deal if we can. So always give us a ring and we'll talk turkey and uh, see what we can do for you. In the meantime, enjoy your ham radio. You take care. And as usual, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. <laughs>